On September 11, 2001, Al Qaeda terrorists attacked the United States, killing nearly 3,000 people in a single day. They did so in the name of Islam. Many predicted an immediate anti Muslim backlash. It didn't happen. I also want to speak tonight directly to Muslims throughout the world. We respect your faith. It's practiced freely by many millions of Americans and by millions more in countries that America counts as friends. You can say a lot of things about George Bush, but what you can't say is that he was a bigot. Reza Aslan is an Islamic scholar who's written extensively about America's relationship with the Muslim world. Even at the height of Bush's evangelizing foreign policy, like at the, the height of the us versus them, good versus evil rhetoric, at no point was there this sense that the American Muslim community uh, was anything other than uh, America's greatest asset. This same community, however, has found itself increasingly the object of suspicion in more recent years. A survey conducted in 2011 by the Public Religion Institute revealed that half of Americans now consider Islam incompatible with American values. The question is, what changed? On the 10th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks, the eyes of the world were once again on New York. At Ground Zero, television cameras from around the world captured the ceremony honoring the memory of the victims. Who with his sparkling blue eyes and infectious smile is greatly missed and deeply loved every single day. Two blocks north, another gathering struck a very different tone. And if you don't have a God on your side, trust me, they have a God they're willing to die for. They're willing to strap bombs to their children for. The Freedom Rally, as it was called, was organized by Pamela Geller, the co-founder of Stop Islamization of America, considered a hate group by the Anti-Defamation League. I want to thank all you brave patriots for coming out. Geller was an obscure right-wing blogger until 2010, when she began mobilizing opposition against a proposed Islamic community center, or what she called... It's Mega Mosque. Mega, Mos Mega Mosque at Ground Zero. Although the site wasn't at Ground Zero, it was the perfectly packaged controversy. It provided Geller a seemingly boundless platform to depict the proposed Islamic center and Islam itself as a threat to America. It's a 15-story middle finger to the American people. It's encroaching Islamic supremacism. This explicit, unapologetic connection between Al-Qaeda terrorists and America's Muslim community, that is what was unprecedented. That was the kind of rhetoric that would have been inconceivable a couple of years ago. The huge truck bombs last week. But it was a connection that resonated bolstered by daily news reports of suicide bombings abroad and new terror plots hatched right here at home. Some successful... Authorities say the shooter is 39-year-old Major Nadal Malik Hassan. Others, thankfully not. No one here has been hurt but an extremely suspicious vehicle found in Times Square. Geller's alarmist rhetoric began to spread. No. There will never be a mosque at Ground Zero. So you're saying any community, if they want to ban a mosque? Yes, they have the right to do that. Congressman Peter King echoed Geller in justifying his controversial decision to hold hearings on the radicalization of American Muslims. The threat right now to this country is coming from within the Muslim American community. In this environment, the building of new mosques anywhere became reason for suspicion regardless of their distance from ground zero. A proposed mosque here in Temecula. In the middle of Tennessee, a group of Muslims. They believe arson is the cause of an overnight blaze that heavily damaged a house of worship. Crews spent much of last night at the scene of the Islamic center of Marietta. As these news clips attest, Islamophobia in America is on the rise.